Representative Jordan and on which which bill would you like to uh, take up? Let's start with 544. All right. All right. Uh, Representative Jordan on House Bill 544, civil procedure relative provides relative to legislative continuances. Representative Jordan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members. Uh, this is House Bill 544. It deals with legislative continuances by attorney members of the legislature uh, and court proceedings. Uh, really, what I'm trying to attempt through this is just for a clarification uh, of the law. Um, right now, as long as you file a legislative continuance uh, five days prior to a hearing, um, you are um by statute it's a peremptory right that you have that you should be granted a continuance anytime 30 days before session or 30 days after session or during a session um what i'm really trying to do right now is clarify uh, a few events within the statute itself uh and have a little bit more of an understanding of what our roles are as legislative members. So I know that there are some amendment sets. Um, I have looked at some of them this morning. Uh, some I have not been privy to, so I can't say whether I would object or not object to them. But for the most part, as long as we can have these clarifications, I think uh, I don't think I would have a huge issue with them. All right. Uh, before we get to the amendments, uh, let me just ask you, um, Let's talk about the the first section of the bill that you're amending, the waiver of a, any waiver or pri of privilege by a member or legislative employee shall be expressed and in writing. Uh, give us give us the you know give us the background on that. Uh, obviously, you have a situation where a legislator maybe a matter has been set and you ask for a legislative continuance and. Uh, the opponent or the judge actually it should be the judge because it's supposed to be ex parte says you've waived that right. privilege. So, so let's talk about you, that. I can give you I can give you a couple examples. So let's say that uh, it's September and they set a date for you in February. Well, at the time that you agree into the date in February, you may not have anything on your calendar, but you may. The governor or the legislature may call a special session that might create an issue or you serve on appropriations or you serve on like I do audit advisory. There are committees that meet into in the interim that you may not know that uh, you don't know when the date is going to be set. It may not be on your calendar then, but but maybe it subsequently comes on your calendar and you may need a continuance for it. Uh, that'd be one example. I think another example would be that you make an appearance in court uh, to, even though you file, timely file the legislative continuance, but you make a continuance to note your objection. Well, maybe, you know, by your mere appearance, does that moot the need for a continuance by, you know, the judge said it moots it because you actually showed up. But you know, you may have shown up just to state your objection again on the record and in person. And so I don't think an attorney needs to be faced with the fact of, well, do I appear in court and potentially moot the uh, the objection or, or, or the continuance that I've that I filed or not appear and then have to wait for it to be declared a nullity on the back end. So those would be issues where I would say you, you could be expressing in writing so it would be clear. Uh, however, I do think that there is a potential amendment that that might change that language, but still accomplish the same goal. Hold on one sec. Uh, and then let's talk about um, on uh, page two, uh, line 16 through 20 or th through 19. Uh, where you, you say, notwithstanding any law to the contrary, the sh court shall take judicial notice. How, t tell, us, tell us how currently 
uh, a legislator who utilizes this uh, this legislative continuance lets the court know about the set legislatures in session or that there's a committee meeting set for a particular day. Well, you do that by way of, of filing your, your, your ex parte motion for a legislative continuance. But I will tell you, I've spoken with the representative from the District Judges Association, and I don't think they have, uh, as my understanding, that they have no objection with this provision because they say it's simple enough that they can go to the website and see when hearings are set. So it gives them the discretion if they want to. Um, and, and we can take, if you change the, the court shall, or you can change that to a may, um, would give them the, the opportunity to do that. But they don't, uh, in my discussions with them, that was, this section was not an issue. Yeah, I mean, because I, I think it's, it, I mean, it's, it's in the law as far as when our sessions are typically held and uh, you know but then if it there's is in the law but but again going back to the 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 first question um, if you have an interim committee hearing uh, if you have something like audit advisory if you have a special task force that you're a part of um, for instance I was part of the Ronald Green I was part of a task force to investigate the death of Ronald Green and so that's you know some of those hearings happen during session but some of those happen outside of the regular session so um, those are just examples of when we can be called in that's, that's outside of the, the 60 or 90 days that we're here on a regularly called session. All right. And um, if it's not published on the website, then they're not going to be able to take judicial notice. Would you agree with that? I, I would agree with that. Um, however, um, our, our staff usually does a, a very good job of keeping that up to date and posting when we, when we have hearings, even during, the, uh, even during the interim. Now, and I think there's going to be a, an amendment to change, you know, a couple of amendments uh, to change uh, paragraph, uh, subparagraph B on the end of page 2, uh, lines 24 through 28. I mean, basically, if a party or attorney opposes a motion for continuance or extension, uh, the court shall award reasonable shall award attorney's fees of not less than one thousand um, dollars. I mean, it, it it seems that even if they it doesn't, it, it seems to me that you would say that even if that opposition is justified, then because it it was filed because the motion was filed untimely. Or because uh, there's no grounds for it, uh, that, that it seems like that would put a a put a, a a chilling effect on anybody who's going up against a, a, if a legislator was, lawyer. No, but if a motion was filed untimely, and none of this applies to begin with. Um, so this is a timely filed mo uh, applies to a timely filed motion, and and so. Here is the, the rationale behind that. It's a peremptory ex parte motion. Peremptory by definition means without contradiction and no need for explanation. So if you look at the very, whether it's Merriam-Webster or whether it's Black Laws Dictionary, which most of the attorneys here know, it, uh, they're familiar with Black, Black's Law Dictionary. And so you can look that up and see what it says. And so... Under 863, if you don't have a legal right to file a motion, by definition, again, it's a frivolous motion. And so that's where that comes from. Now, again, I will tell you, uh, in all frankness, I'm not, I'm not tied or entrenched to it, but I can certainly give you the rationale and the legal theory behind it. But I mean, I mean, you might have a situation where you later on in your bill, it, it I think it refers to. Uh, that that you have some other deadlines or not five days and uh, I'm trying to f find where it says that uh, that y you might have less than two days or they they just found out about a, a, a hearing uh, a committee hearing that they had to be at you know so the question is how quickly did you know about that meeting and how how you know how how fast did you file that well, motion uh, that motion right you know. well no look i mean but sometimes we have and 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 again the the law as uh, as is currently written may account for that 
again, this, some of this is, is clarification, but sometimes we get hearings that are within the five days and you don't know within the five days. Yeah. And, so and I think in, in those, in those areas, uh, you know. Yeah. I mean, because for one, I mean, you know, Code of Civil Procedure Article 863, uh, you know, D provides for, you know, sanctions if someone files something that doesn't have merit. Uh, so if they oppose a, a well-founded uh, motion, ex parte motion for a continuance. But, and I think what I'm going to, referring to is on page three, lines 15 through 19, dealing with if the grounds for continuance or extension are found upon any provision uh, in subparagraph C, and the member is unable to comply with the notice requirements, the member or employer shall give notice at the earliest time practicable prior to the hearing or proceeding to be continued. So that's that's where you've kind of got some, uh, it's, it's not solid ground on someone to say, wait a minute, uh, you know. Well, I think where, in that situation, though, is just a further clarification is if in the event that you don't get the notice for the hearing within the five days. But it, that's not that's well, not necessarily what it says. Okay. So, well, but, I mean, look, yeah. again. No, and I just and I look, I'm just trying to clarify for for me for where we are, you know, and and where we're going, uh, and I think a couple of other matters. It, on page three, if the legal deadline has run on lines 23 through 26, a motion or con motion to continue or extend a legal deadline shall be timely if filed within five days prior to a hearing or proceeding on a motion for sanction or penalties brought by opposing counsel for the failure of the member or employee to comply with the legal deadline. Now we're talking about legal deadlines. My, right. my understanding is the legislative continuance was for hearings, you know, and so, now we're so extending it to deadlines. So if this is, so this part of the bill is actually um, taken from last year's bill, which came out of this committee. So, that's all that is. Are this, we this bound by what we did last year? We're absolutely not. But I'm, I'm giving you, you, you're giving me a portion. You're asking me for my reasoning behind it. I'm sure. I'm giving you that. Okay. Um, and then finally, the uh, you talk about on page uh, four, um, and, and another la uh, another thing is on page four, lines eleven through fifteen. Uh, any action taken against a person who has filed a motion for continuance or extension which resulted from or relates back to the misapplication shall be considered an absolute nullity and shall be set aside by a court or agency upon the filing of the motion by the aggrieved person or attorney. I mean, where? tell me what, tell me what that is trying to uh, address. Well, the the portion about the absolute nullity is uh, is already in law, but the portion about no cost to the attorney um, comes from this. So these these motions can be filed at the district court level at no cost, um, but in the event that they're denied and you have to take a writ, which is allowed by the statute as well. And you have to take a writ to the Supreme Court, then you have to pay for that. And so Can, if the initial is at no cost to the at the district court level, then if the writ is directly tied to that, that really is where that would come from. And uh, you, you said it's already in the law about uh, absolute nullity. Where Where is that? I'm, I'm looking in uh, the provision oh. dealing with the legislative continuances. Uh, 134163. Well, you got uh, the bill here, and some of it is taken out. But if we go, I'm, I'm reading the. I'm looking at the law. I looked at the law this yeah. morning, and I, I G. Yes, yeah, in G. Yeah, it's already there. Yeah. Any action. Okay. All right. I see. That part. That's already in law. Okay. Uh, and then finally, you you have an automatic recusal of a judge right that does not does not grant a continuance well look i think i think we would be fooling ourselves if if we're going to sit here and say that some folks at the judiciary are offended by this law and to them i don't i don't i don't have an an issue with that i mean if if we have three branches of government 
and we have checks and balances on that. If you're offended by that, I certainly have no issue with that, but don't prejudice me or my client because of that. And so we got a lot of judges who have no problems with the legislative continuances, but certainly we, we have some that do. And, and for those, again, I, I'm not trying to uh, convince them or sway them or, or anything like that. I think they're well within the right to feel the way that they feel. But at, at, at the same time, again, um, this is something that, that we as legislators, as attorney legislators, have a right to do, have a right to file as long as we, as long as we timely file them. We've got that peremptory right. And just because we exercise that right, we shouldn't, that shouldn't be held against us. Well, also, aren't there procedures to make a motion to recuse a judge uh, in, a, in a case and where the judge, if you set the grounds for the recusal, the self-recusal, and if he doesn't, it gets referred to a, an ad hoc judge? You could. To, I mean, that, that's, that's, the, that's the way we have set up in, in the Code of Civil Procedure now. Currently, we do. Yeah, and so you you don't like that. You want a special uh, a special recusal provision for legislators uh, of judges yeah, and in cases. Yes. yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, Representative Seaball. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Representative Jordan, uh, as you're aware, we dealt with this last year. I, I, I like your bill better than the one we had last year, um, and I would like to address. One thing, I have a set of amendments. There's been a couple of references to amendments. Are there amendments other than mine? Yes, I have a set as well. Okay, well, but you're, you're the chairman. You want to take yours first? Do you want me to go ahead? Uh, you go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Um, with respect to um, the bottom of page three, the legal deadline. Bottom um, of page three. Hold on. Let me make sure I'm with you. And I guess I want to address this, I guess, to the chairman who raised the question. Okay. Uh, paragraph C1 specifically references extension of any type of deadline pertaining to a criminal or civil case. Um, that's one that I've dealt with before because the, the, the provision, the, the statute as it currently exists, it says a hearing or extension of a deadline. There are provisions in the statute that deal with when a a continuance to for a hearing is timely I can find nothing in the statute that says when a, a continuance or extension of a deadline is timely filed either way so um, I, I believe that particular language at the bottom of page three was added to last year's bill what? at my request because we the, the statute as it exists now doesn't address when a continuance or a motion to extend a deadline is timely filed uh, do you have a recollection different from that? I don't. Okay. And I just um, would like to address it. The three things, I had three things addressed in my amendments. Um, do you want to go ahead and introduce the amendments? Yeah, let's go ahead. Uh, and Ms. Pertle, why don't you talk about amendments set 2051? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Members of the committee, this is uh, amendment set 2051. Amendment 1, uh, it wait for the waiver of privilege it show it says that it shall not be irrevocable um for amendment two it amends present law and then after deadline it will insert or legal delay amendment three and four they uh it, it basically says that the court may award attorney fees rather than shall and then removes the requirement that the attorney fees are at least one thousand dollars i would have right. no objection to any of those amendments all right all right thank you miss pearl now, on, on, I, I just on the legal delays, my, my question is, I mean, obviously, if a motion for summary judgment is, is filed and it's uh, set, you know, and we have some strict, strict rules for motion for summary judgment, and it's set on a day or within that 30 days before or 30 days after, uh, and you're entitled to an ex- parte legislative continuance the question is do you get to still have the what when would the deadlines for filing opposition be due is that what you're part of what you're getting at representative Seaball? yeah yes to some extent the um you could obviously move the hearing but 
let's say the hearing is after the session, but your opposition brief would be due within that time period. Um, the statute says you're entitled to an extension of a deadline, but it doesn't say when that motion for extension would be timely or when it wouldn't. So the way we worded this, and this was done in committee last year, would be if filed within five days prior to a hearing or proceeding on a motion for sanctions or penalties brought by opposing counsel for the failure of the member or employee to comply with the legal deadline. So let's say your brief was due um, and the hearing is later, or, or for instance, you miss a, uh, uh, I don't know, witness and exhibit list deadline or anything like that that falls during session, um, you would, by statute, be entitled to an extension of that deadline. But the statute doesn't say when you have to file that motion for extension. So I was simply saying before, if they file a motion to exclude witnesses because you missed the deadline, you could file the the legislative continuance anytime within five days of that hearing. That That's what we were trying to go when we did this last year. As opposed to... There is nothing in the statute now that says when that motion would be timely. You know, so if, if the court issues a scheduling order that says that the witness the witness list is due during session or during that 30-day period uh, you wouldn't have to file the motion uh you know obviously you would think you would ask for a, an extension because hey that's filed that's being uh on the during the session but you could the question is if i wanted to object to that how the deadline is when you, and you're what, saying five days before when it would be due. No, five days before a hearing to exclude your witnesses as a result of missing the deadline. Mm -hmm. That sort of thing. I mean, you, you could, you, it's impossible to set a case for trial, a civil case, without your, at least your deadlines or your scheduling order going over into a legislative session. I don't think that's possible. Mm -hmm. So you could conceivably file a motion to extend deadlines in every case that was where a deadline was due during session. I don't do that. I, 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 you know, I try not to use this provision. But if there is, it, if something does come up, um, and I, I, I usually will write a letter to opposing counsel and say, look, I can file it. I don't want to. Give me an extra 10 days or whatever. And they usually will, but not always. Yeah, I, and, you know, my question is, do the legal delays that we're ask, talk, talking about, does that also apply to uh, prescription? You know, those type, those type of things, as well as, you know, mandatory delays for answering well, I don't know you how you could have prescription if you're if you haven't filed it yet. You're not counsel of record. I don't know that that would really matter. But that's a that's well, it might be for a for a reconventional demand those type of things. Uh, I think you would supplemental have, it, it, amending. I mean, we could speculate all day long. It's a, it's a it, the the statute says the it, the extension of any deadline is available to the legislator. But the statute does not say when they have to file that extension. We can pick a different time. I don't really care. I just think the statute needs to say when that motion is timely, regardless of where what time we pick to set it. Sure. I just think the fact that the statute says you're entitled to an extension of deadline, but it doesn't give you any guidance on when that motion for extension is timely filed is a bit of a problem. Um, it's one that I, I dealt with a few years ago, um, and it, it is potentially a problem. The specific amendments that we have, number one, simply says if you're, you're trying to add to the bill, the waiver of privilege by a member or legislative employee must be expressed and in writing, which is fine. Um, but, but by the same token, you could agree to it, and then circumstances change. All right. Yeah. And so, that, well, I tell you what, uh, let's. You know, I, th I think the author's been very, you know, forthcoming, uh, willing to, to work with everybody. I know we've got to go back on the floor. Uh, I, I, I don't, I don't want to have to come back tonight. So what, what I'm going to suggest we do is we adopt the amendments. I've got a set of amendments I'd like to adopt, and then we can then uh, let everything lay over uh, for a week well, and then come back. Well, I, w I would tell you, some of the amendments that you have here, or taking things out that are already in law. So I would certainly object to those. 
And I have not seen your set of amendments. Well, are they in the folder? I didn't see them. The, my my amendments really are only dealing with any new new legislation. No, um, I, I saw several several aspects that that are dealing with yeah. the law as it currently is written. And Mr. Chairman, your amendments were not in the folder. Okay, are those online? Yeah. Okay, it's my amendments are amendments at twenty seventy. Mr. Chairman, look, yeah. I, I have, and, and I think I think Representative Seaboy and anybody else who knows me knows that I've been willing to work with everybody. I I have agreed to adopt his amendments. What I'd ask is that we reported reported favorably, and I will certainly work with you and and anything because some of your some of your amendments do. Well, well I tell you what, we're going to do. We're going to adopt Representative Seaboy's amendment. We're going to have my amendments uh, lay over. Uh, we're not going to work on it between here and the floor. We have time. We're going to have a meeting next week. That's so, uh, R Representative Eccles, you had a question? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have some questions. I'm the non one of the line legislators, uh, non lawyer legislators on this committee. So I have some specific questions that relates to this statute and the other things you're referencing. Does this create a further special class or privilege for legislators who are attorneys? No. Second question, could this be manipulated in any way, shape, or form by the judiciary and or legislator attorneys? When you say manipulated, what do you mean? To prevent cases from going to trial. No. If a judge knows and schedules and works with an attorney, and then that attorney, they're able to prevent a case from coming before the court for years at a time, is that possible? For years at a time? Yes. No. Meaning more than one, two years. No. Would never happen, in your opinion, uh, ever. You're asking me if I don't, I don't see how that would be because it's 30 days before, 30 days after. All a judge would have to do is set it sometime after that, and so no, it couldn't happen. So if I'm sued, separate scenario. If I'm sued, I'm a legislator, and I'm busy with a committee hearing or something else, cause I, could I prevent from having to go to court because I'm a, a legislator? Yeah, because you're a party. So as a party, I don't have to go to court as a legislator? You could, no, you could, you're asking as a legislator, could you have your attorney file the continuance? I, I don't know. Based, based on your statute, I think that's. I think that's your question. I understand if I hired Representative Freeman to to represent me as a legislator, then yeah, based on this bill. But me as a legislator, if I don't hire him, my average Joe attorney off Joe the street, Blow. do I do I get out of having to go to court because I'm busy with legislative uh, stuff? I think as a party, I think that you could do that. Now I'm not sure. I'd have to look at the statute to be clear on. Well, that. you're rewriting it, so I'm trying to understand. That part what, I'm not. But that part I'm not touching. So that wouldn't change anything. My my um, my amendments don't don't address your issue. Would you be willing to add to your bill that if a court case is not heard within two years of whatever y'all's filing processes are, that you automatically have to turn it over to another attorney that's not a legislator to ensure that cases get to court? I don't necessarily have a problem with it. I'm not telling you I'd add that because I don't. Again, I just address your scenario. I don't think there's an issue where that would occur. If it's not an issue, then it won't be an issue amending the bill to include that language. So I'll, I'm glad we're going to wait a week on this one because I've got some ideas as the non-attorney in the room. So thank you. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and adopt uh, Amendment Set 2051. Uh, Representative Seabaugh has moved to adopt Amendment Set. Oh, as soon as we get a quorum. We need ten. All right. Uh, all right. Representative Seabaugh has moved to adopt Amendment Set 2051. Any objections to the adoption of Amendment Set 2051? Seeing none, that Amendment Set is adopted. All right. Uh, instead of adopting uh, my Amendment Set, uh, I've got that published. We're going to clear up any type of confusion on that. So, uh, you know, we're going to go ahead and let this bill lay over for a week. And, uh, and unfortunately, 
we're going to have to ask. Uh, I'm sorry we didn't get to everybody today, but uh, ordinarily I would be recessing until after adjournment, but not today. So okay. with that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and voluntarily defer until next week. Uh, House Bill uh, 544 by Representative Jordan. Any objections? Seeing none, House Bill 544 is voluntarily deferred.